2-0 pitch. Swing and a drive to deep center field. Long run for Jennings, looking up, and it is gone. No, he said it went through. Desmond is saying it went through the wall. He's saying it should be a double. They have called it a homer, and it's now a 7-4 game, or a 8-5 ball game, rather. And Desmond Jennings is putting his hands up, saying that did not go over the wall. It went through, and they're calling it a home run right now, and here comes Charlie Montoya. They want him to look at it. And Char Desmond is pointing to a spot where he said it went through and it's lodged up there. Well, it's behind the pad. If it's behind the pad, there's no way the ball went out. And then it would be a ground rule double, and it would be 7-5 versus 8-5 here. And Charlie Montoya is asking Mark Lolo, the crew chief, to go out there and take a look at least. They do all of that, right? I would think so. I mean, if you're going to conference here, you know where the ball is. Let's get a replay on this while we wait. Desmond is pointing to a spot. It's actually behind the pad. It's behind the pad. You can see the ball. And Desmond is pointing at it as he sits in center field with the rest of the Durham outfield. Well, the goal of it is to get the call right. And I think you'll see Charlie go wild if they don't even go out and look at it. We cut it. There we are. Oh, it's definitely underneath. Yeah. Oh, my God. It went right behind it. That's not a homer. No, nope, it hit behind the bike rack. They're right in front of the bike rack. As well, I now they're going to go out and look. At least they're going to get it right in this spot. There's no way the ball can go over and get behind the pad. I mean, that's physically impossible, the way that outfield wall is right, set up. But what Gary Allenson is saying now, how can you guarantee that's the ball that was hit? That could be a ball from BP or something. There was no BP on the field today. From years in days before. <laughs> All right. Desmond Jennings says, see? And now the umpire is going behind the wall. He picks up the baseball and says two bases. All right, they got it right. Ground will double for Henson, although that is a big run, making it 7-5. It's better than 8-5. And Gary Ellenson's going to argue here. What can he argue? I'm saying the only thing argument that you have is that's not the ball. That's a ball from another day. There's no way you can. I mean, they got it right. There's no way the ball could have gone over the fence, and the replay clearly showed it. I think Gary, if anything, he's arguing why they changed it. Or how they changed it. And Gary's going to get himself tossed right here. I can guarantee it. Well, it looks that way. It looks like he's going to head out there. Allenson is nose-to-nose -nose with Chris Ward who had, had a, trig, a quick trigger finger in the Lehigh Valley series when he threw out Dave Myers. He is giving Gary oh. Allenson a whole lot of leeway. Allenson's going to walk all the way out to left field. He's going to walk out to center field. He's going to go look at the pad, and I guarantee he gets halfway out there. He's going to get run because he's holding up the game. How do you let the, the third base coach and manager walk all the way out? He's just been tossed. Well, he should have done that earlier, and then that would have taken care of it. But I don't know what Allenson's going to be looking out in center field. So Gary is going to get a nice stroll, and we're going to be delayed by Mr. Allenson at this point. Does this kind of count as dead man walking since he's been thrown out already? I don't know what the story is here. Gary's taking his sweet time, too. Well, he wants to see what for himself. I mean, could you jog it a little bit? I mean, we do have a game to finish tonight. It is 7-5 in the ninth inning. Don Zimmer said, come to the park. You never know what you might see, and you'll see something new. Now, Gary Allison did his Manny Ramirez impersonation. Walked behind the, oh, that's what the, the umpire, Chris Ward, did. Yep, he's going to pick his head up. There he is. And now he's going to walk over the top of the outfield fence and out. That's an interesting exit, although I don't know where else he can go from there. You can't go up the wall. He's going to find out he's stuck. He's looking for a baseball. But it wouldn't be all the way over there. But he's going to say, see, there's baseballs left up here from BP. And that's what that ball is. I guarantee you that's what he's arguing. <laughs> You're not going to find anything. Come on. Let's move it along here. I mean, he's looking under the camera well. The, the case of the missing ball. They found it, Gary. It's over. Move on. Encyclopedia Brown. This is the, uh, the proverbial ball hunt instead of a witch hunt. 
You ever seen this? Of course not. The umpire found it. You're not going to find a second. Well, he went out there and he said, I guarantee you I'm going to find another ball up there from a BP. You can't guarantee this one. And now Chris Warren is still jawing with the dugout of the Norfolk Tides as this all goes on. Say so it's an A for effort. An A for effort is if he's going to jog it in a little bit. Well, no, I just say it's an A for effort to make your point. See, here's the thing with Wrigley Field, too. I mean, this is where it comes into play. Wrigley Field in that IV in the late summer, there's balls left in there all over the place. I know from the, for a fact, Jose Cardinal told me, he was a base coach for a long time in the big leagues, said they used to store balls up there just for that very reason, because you could pull one out and then throw it in. But Desmond Jennings, to his credit, I think handled this as well as he could because he put his hands up immediately and it made it very clear to the umpires, I didn't think the ball left the yard. And that led Charlie Montoya to come out. If he doesn't throw his hands up, there's no chance that's overruled. And what Desmond has the advantage of over the umpires is he can hear that hit the wrought iron. I refer to it as the bicycle rack, just because it looks like one. But sometimes the ball goes through, sometimes it doesn't. If you hit iron, that ball is going to come back, and that's exactly what happened. The ball hit iron, went back behind the pad. And now Gary's going to go get his money's worth. I think he's asking what I do. What'd you do? <laughs> All right, Chris Ward now will hear from Gary Allenson over at third base. At some point, we gotta move this along, right? I would think so. This crew wasn't very good in Lehigh Valley and they aren't showing their expertise here. The views expressed by Mr. Solons are not those of his partner, Scott Pose. 7-5 ball game in the ninth inning. A run scores on what was originally a homer, correctly ruled a ground rule double because the ball fell behind the pad in center. For those of you watching the television portion of our broadcast on our simulcast today, perhaps we can show it one more time and show why the call was correctly changed from a homer to a double as Gary Allenson will depart here in the ninth inning after being ejected. Brad Comments, who's a former Class A bull and a hitting coach for the Norfolk Tides, will be now coaching third. Here's the number eight hitter, John Hester, with a game at 7-5 in the ninth inning. And they're going to wait until Gary Allenson departs and goes down the stairs. There he goes.